Hey, hey, everybody, it's Eddie from Tokyo. This is your cryptocurrency update from Japan. Well, in preparing for today's video, I made a decision, and that is I'm going to do two videos today. I'm pulling this story out to do freestanding on its own. Why? Because I think if I had just wedged it into all those other stories that are really great today, um, it would have been watered down. And in addition, I would have had to gloss over it much quicker. And there are some points in summarizing it that I think deserve a little bit more time. So here we go. It was a podcast done on November 28th. It was uploaded just this last Sunday on the 9th. Brian McCullough, who's had this podcast for about five years, asked him some very good questions. Um, some were very light, and towards the end, it was a big, heavy question that actually David responded, I think, in a very sincere way. First, he was asked what was his first computer. Well, that was an Apple II, and he talks about the aesthetic that that computer had with grace and elegance. And I think I understand that. When we work with devices, whether it's your iPhone or your laptop or your iPad or whatever it is that you're working with, there happens to be a relationship that occurs. Now, as everybody knows that I'm working on an old 2011 Toshiba. I just love my old 2011 Toshiba here. I have a brand new Toshiba next to me with Windows 10, much more powerful, but I just can't get into a relationship with it. Every time I use it, I think I'm two timing. And this one has been so faithful to me, I just can't give up on it. So I have decided to use this old one until it can no longer boot up. So I totally understand when David talked about the grace and elegance that he felt with his Apple II. I just feel that um, in so many ways with the devices that I work with too. And did you know, originally, he started his programming using HP calculators. So even though the programmable functions are crude, uh, you could get banners or even do complex uh, measuring like distance between genes on them. But essentially, the calculators could key in and store calculations. And though it was simple, obviously, these were the building blocks that were taken to form the current career that David has. In the 80s, uh, yeah, when he was in college, they were still drawing out logic circuits by hand on paper. Uh, and it wasn't so cool in those days to be a coder. I mean, it was thought of in those days that coders were just banging away on keyboards. And he really wanted to do something that challenged him and interest him uh, using the knowledge he had. But he wanted to look for real use cases in regards to what interests him. And that brought him closer to uh, cryptography, uh, particularly we know with security and cloud storage. In 2004, when Ripple Pay first became uh, into its existence, it was a way to um, move communication from A to B to C. But what happens if you could then skip basically ripple across, go from A to C. So it was thought of as just rippling across the platform. And that's how essentially the name Ripple formed. And in 2011, he was hired by Jed. And uh, with Arthur Brito, that's how the beginnings of the XRP ledger became. And he does think that today is very much like the dial-up stage of the internet. We are still very early. And what he doesn't want to see is that we put the adoption ahead of the technology. Because in that case, we might be in a situation where we overpromise. So that was interesting, I thought. When now he got asked the question about the tribal nature of cryptocurrency. He said it's incredibly unfortunate. 
and went on to make the remarks that if the crypto markets are sending us any signal, it's we're all in this together, then we should be working together to grow the pie instead of fighting over slices of today's use case. There's very much Oh, it's there, there, it, there is very much like religious battles of influential people who are committed to a position that one digital asset is the best and can't even acknowledge the strengths of others or weaknesses of their own, which makes it difficult for people to make decisions about what assets to use or what to use for them. Tribalism is chasing a lot of people out of the space because some platforms like Twitter are extremely hostile. We need to fix that. So I couldn't agree more. And I do agree with David that there are going to be different use cases with different requirements with different assets. So I think it's a big lesson for us to learn and uh, I'm going to do my part, and that is why also I decided to make this uh, video stand on its own for that message. Okay, everybody, take care. Sayonara for now, and I'm going to follow with the rest of today's news. Thank you so much.